exposed and I just squished the bee. Sorry. That's a problem because that'll give off a pheromone, an alarm pheromone. The other bees will come see what's going on and then you're fixing to get stung, as Cayman Reynolds would say. Hot July weekend in the bee yard. Just uh, glad that we don't live any further south. 80 degrees and we're already sweating. But we wear these bee smocks. A lot of beekeepers use big padded suits for various reasons. This is uh, what we bought initially. It works good. It's uh, actually really good on a day like today where it's uh, rather warm. Um, and I have yet to be stung through this. I've been stung through my blue jeans before um, and my gloves. So I use these. These are new to us. They're puncture resistant gloves. So I'm gonna use those and I put leather gloves over top. So let's get going. Be smoker. It's always uh, good if you get it started and get it going like this. Nice lots of smoke. We're gonna look at every one of these hives today. So we're gonna need plenty of smoke to do that. Always come to the bee yard with a hive tool. This is the one that I prefer. It's one I started with. J hook for pulling the frames out. A spatula type deal here. Probably called something like a knife or something, but good for getting in between the frames and separating them when the bees glue them together with propolis. Hive two most likely hopelessly queenless, but we're gonna check them out anyways. It's one of the hives we split from earlier this year. Lots of earwigs. Very, very little activity. This hive is probably gone. So I use that blade of the hive tool to separate the frames. To use the J hook and pull one side up, go to the other side, pull it up, rest it on the box, set the hive tool down not too far away, and absolutely nothing but some nectar in that frame. Most of which just spilled out when I tipped it. So we're gonna cut to the chase and get to the bottom box. These guys look any better down here. And they're really not looking much better. There's a few bees just hanging out there. drone right there probably can't see it the camera's not pointing down far enough but that's probably what's mostly in this colony uh, yep some nectar no real signs of any brood Yep. Pretty much a goner. They like to glue everything together with bee glue. 
better known as Propolis or Propolis. Pardon? That's much better looking. Only a few earwoods. Last time there were a whole bunch of them. This top box is a honey super. We have a queen excluder in between this box and the brood boxes. We run mediums. We were advised when we first started that it was easier, especially for older people like us, easier to lift. And you don't have to worry about mixing up your equipment. You don't have to wonder, did I bring deeps and I needed mediums or vice versa? This box has some plastic frames that we received when we purchased a nuke. So that's why these ones look different. They're not wood. What? Is that a queen cell? Yeah, it was. Did you just rip it apart? So that's a queen cell that I pulled apart when I removed this frame. You can see there's a larva in there and royal jelly. They may repair that. I didn't, it doesn't look like I damaged the larva at all. She's just swimming in royal jelly. So that's what makes the difference between a worker bee and a queen bee is how much of this royal jelly that they're fed. Oh, there's the queen right there. You going back in there then? Yeah. <laughs> So there's larvae in a number of those cells. There's still some cap brood as well. Try to move slowly when handling the frames and not drop the frames into the box. Set them back in there gently. Same on this frame, some larva. It's hard to see with this being a yellow frame. We're trying to transition, or yellow foundation. We're trying to transition to black for the brood nest and yellow for the honey supers. Thank <laughs> you. 
Give them a couple puffs of smoke. Coax them down into the hive a little bit. A little bit concerning seeing that queen cell with a developing queen in it. Typically that's a sign of swarming. If the cell was up on the frames instead of down below, it would be called a supersedure cell, which typically they will do if the queen is failing for some reason. It will create a supersedure cell. And the queen is superseded by a new queen. Inspect the bottom of the frame looking for other queen cells. It's odd to me, even though I'm not that experienced of a beekeeper, that there would only be one queen cell. That's the problem with these gloves is they leave some of your skin exposed and I just squish the bee. Sorry. That's a problem because that'll give off a pheromone, an alarm pheromone. The other bees will come see what's going on and then you're fixing to get stung, as Cayman Reynolds would say. Okay, we're going to tilt this and look at the bottom of it. As you can hear, they have gotten a little more riled up. They're loud now, possibly for a number of reasons. Their queen is in the box that we put up top here. So they may not be able to sense her being in this box. Or it could be that bee that I just hurt by squishing. Again, lots of propolis. Oh my goodness, that just came out of there. What? That. What Step on it. What is it? I don't know. I don't see it. All right, just a quick update on the puncture resistant gloves. Future Eddie here, a few days later. This hive here is a very protective hive, sometimes called a hot hive. Not 100% sure why. They seem to have everything they need, but a lot of bees in there. And when we opened them the other day, I had not only these gloves on but my leather gloves as well and a bee was able to not only sting through the leather but all the way through these gloves here too so they say on the package that they're puncture resistant and used for uh, all kinds of different applications don't trust it they are really not that good 